middle of November, sunny 70 degrees. Would love to be testing outdoors, but due to the 40 mile per hour, there it is, wind gust, we're testing in the garage. Buffalo bore, 45 ACP. <laughs> Jacketed hollow point, testing with the SimTest Media calibrated to ballistic gel specs, four layers of denim. Test gun is the Colt 1911, five inch barrel. Buffalo Boar is probably best known for producing higher than average velocities in their defensive ammo for handguns. For example, we have the Buffalo Boar 230 grain and then the Golden Sabre 230 grain from Remington right next to that. I'm gonna show you this again in just a moment for uh, some close-up purposes. In any event, typically American-made 45 ACPs are advertised at 890, maybe 900 feet per second, sometimes a little bit higher, but Buffalo Bore is advertising 950 feet per second. Their test gun was a Colt 1911 5-inch barrel, which is what I have here. You'll see that they are using Starline brass, by the way, and there is a plus P designation. My 5-shot average is actually coming in higher on average then they're advertised. My string was as follows, 964, 969, 979, 951, and 961 for an average of 964. So you can tell you got a little bit something extra going there, but still recoil was manageable. This is a low flash powder, and by the way, if you shoot a lot of um, higher velocity ammo in your handgun over time, and I have no way of saying how long that could be, but you will obviously um, have a little bit more wear on your handgun if you shoot a lot of this. And I mean hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of rounds. So keep that in mind. Uh, let's see what else we have here. I'm going to give you a close-up of the Buffalo Bore and the Remington Golden Sabre. The two bullets look very much alike, and some folks might swear that's a Golden Sabre that uh, Buffalo Bore is using, but it is not. Again, Buffalo Bore is on the left. There are straight short serrations on that bullet, and then you have your spiral serrations on the Golden Sabre. So although they look alike, and that might actually be a brass jacket, that is not a Golden Sabre. In fact, I'm about 99% certain that is a Montana Gold bullet, and that's a very popular bullet in the world of competition. So we're going to see how this performs in the SimTest Media calibrated to ballistic gel specs. I've worked with this before, 9mm and had some very interesting results there. We'll be shooting from 10 feet, again using the Colt, and we'll come back and look at the results. I had quite a bit of water back up just in case, but it's in the block with good location. Focus on the right side of the track first as I was cutting through the media. Point of entry Expansion starts about an inch and a half in. The stretch cavity runs for about three and a half inches, so that's a little impressive there, and about three quarters of an inch in height here. But notice, and this is at the two and a half inch mark, we have a piece of the jacket that is shredded off, and there could be more in here. We're going to stop there. I lost that track. Going up to the left side, again, similar cavity, obviously here, about three and a half inches. See some denim that's been blown in. And at the 7, what's that mark? 7.3, wrote that down. 7.3 inches, another piece of the jacket has been exposed, that's shredded. And right here at the 9 inch mark is yet another piece of jacket. So there could be more in this area here. Now the track is underneath, in there. We are at 15, 16, and 17. The leading edge, I have measured at 17 and a half inches. Not much expansion, and again, more jacket separation. That little uh, piece there just didn't quite make it off. I have two average diameters for you. The first is the lead core itself. That average is .628. That didn't expand very much at all. But you can see there is a pedal that just about peeled away from the core. So I had to figure that in as average diameter, and that one came in at .701. Retained weight is 225.6 grains, obviously as a result of the jacket separation.
Buffalo bore is definitely giving us some consistent higher velocities than what we typically see in 45 ACP. You just need to wonder whether or not it's worth that additional pressure in your handgun. So you need to check that with your manufacturer to ensure that it will indeed handle these higher pressures in a safe manner. Great penetration, that's fine, but I'm still concerned about the nature of this Montana Gold as a JHP or jacketed hollow point. I also tested a Montana Gold bullet in a double tap load, 9mm, a couple of years ago. That was in wet pack, but I had similar characteristics in bullet performance with jacket separation and so forth. This seems to be more of a hard cast bullet or a jacketed semi-watt cutter than it is a jacketed hollow point. Thanks for watching.